I wonder if I'm live yet. I'll give this a moment to get us all on and I'll open my other recording software. Good morning. Good morning. It's not morning. Good afternoon. I hope you guys have been enjoying my reels. If you're watching me on Instagram, if you're watching me on YouTube or Facebook, guess what? I have reels um, and I'm making more. I've got a whole bunch. I'm so excited. Um, and I just set this up to record because I'm going to use this today, what we're going to talk about live. I'm going to use it on my podcast. So in case you missed some of this, you can find it on my podcast as well. Go ahead and start recording there. Welcome. Hi. Please let me know in the comments of wherever you're watching me. I'm streaming to YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram right now. Um, please let me know where you are. And I might do a couple questions at the end. We'll see. But yeah. Let's begin. Let me know where you are. Let me know how old your baby is and where in the process of ECU you are or whatever you want to share. Welcome. Now, we're going to talk about four things today, all right? We are going to talk about resistance during a road trip, nine tricks to solve potty resistance during a road trip. Um, I have some very practical skills for you there. And we're also going to pull something from my brand new courses. Um, they, by the time you hear this on the podcast, they're going to be out already. And some of you guys watching or listening, you're going to find them really soon. Maybe you've already pre-purchased these big courses, but they're basically our newborn um, baby meets potty new program, the movers and shakers for mobile babies and pass the baton for young toddlers. And in these courses, we have a really cool roadmap. I don't have it printed out here. But it's super cool that talks about all the things developmentally to expect during these windows, including crawling and sitting and all of those other things. So um, the other three topics we're going to talk today are things to expect with EC in the newborn phase, in the mobile baby phase, and in the young toddler phase. So those are the four topics we're going to talk about today. Are you guys ready? I'm going to take some, some tea. Went to the old Chick-fil-A today. I'm so glad it's open again so I can go inside. Okay. So let's begin. If you haven't already, put in the chat where you're where you're joining us from. And we've got Hi Joy over in YouTube. And we've got over in Instagram. Let me see. How can I scroll up on this? Where is it? Well, I can't even see your – maybe I'll figure out how to do that. Oh, there we go. Okay. You guys have all joined on Instagram. Please let me know where you're calling and where you're joining me from. Where are you on your phone? <laughs> where in the world are you? And where are you with baby, BB and EC? All right, so let's begin. We're going to start now. Oh, Allison's in San Diego. So I'm getting a little bit here. Um, there's a little bit of a delay just because I'm trying to be everywhere at one time. Okay. So today we're going to talk about resistance during a road trip. Now, I have five kids over the course of 11 years. I am a huge fan of traveling, and I also have babies who don't let me not do EC while traveling. So I have done a lot of potty tunities in a lot of public bathrooms, truck stops, you name it, Airbnbs, hotels, um, in the on the sidewalk. I mean, <laughs> I've done it everywhere during road trips. So today I'm going to share with you nine tricks to solve potty resistance during a road trip because, yeah, sometimes pottying in public is a lot easier than pottying at home. But on the other hand, it can be really, really frustrating if your baby resists on a potty tunity during a road trip and you really need to get back on the road. And this is no joke where a five-hour trip turns into a 10-hour trip. Ask me how I know. Maybe you're in the same boat. So the first thing I want to suggest we've got nine total, is to bring your potty or your seat from home. So get your baby really, really used to using a certain potty seat, whether it's the top hat potty, the mini potty we have at Tiny Undies, or you've got a Ginsey toilet seat reducer, which I love, that has the handles. Um, even if it doesn't fold up, it doesn't matter. Um, maybe you'll use the Potet Plus at home because that's really good for your porta potties and you're pottying over grass and everything, and they get used to that at home. If you have a month before you go on a road trip, maybe or this includes air travel too, you guys. You can apply this to that as well. But especially road trips we're talking about today where you have to make stops and you really need them to go, the last thing we want is potty resistance to go on. So I just remembered something that I didn't remember in here. So I'm going to give you the bonus tip first. So number one is bring your potty seat from home. I don't care how big it is. Get a giant bag from TJ Maxx. Stick your full-on potty seat in it. Carry that with you so that when you go to the public toilet or when you potty inside your minivan, you have the right receptacle that you already know your baby uses. We don't want to put a new potty in the picture on a road trip, okay? I'm going to give you the bonus tip too. 
I want you, because I'm going to forget by the end, I want you to always cover the public toilet sensor because I'm pretty sure I didn't put this in here. Yeah, I didn't put this in my list. That one thing will ruin your public toilet potty tune the experience permanently. Like you can, you're not going to psychologically damage your baby, but you're going to traumatize them a little bit if the toilet flushes on their butt. And did you know that that, that has a name? If you look it up in Urban Dictionary, it's the... Um, Poopus interruptus. <laughs> when the auto flush toilet goes off on your butt, when you are sitting on it, there is a name for it. It's crazy. And I actually, you know how I am. I'm an entrepreneur and I have an invention for that that I'm going to be pre selling to you guys really, 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 really soon. That is so amazing. It's fully developed. We're actually starting production already and I'm going to be taking pre orders on it. I can't tell you what it is, but it solves this possibility of your auto flush going off on your baby's butt. Now, Back to this. So that's your bonus tip. You're going to put a little piece of toilet paper on top of the sensor so the eye can't see them. We never, ever, ever once want to risk that toilet going off on your baby because they will be afraid to go on that potty for three or four years on any public toilet. My daughter, um, Isadora, is eight now. She's just now getting to where she feels comfortable going on public toilets. She just wouldn't go. And then you have problems if they won't go during a road trip. So let's get back to that topic. So that was bonus tip. Number two, uh, keep your potty in the car and use the bathroom in the car. Some babies just aren't going to go in a public toilet or maybe you don't want to go in there because it's kind of gross. I have definitely pottied in the car a lot. I recommend it. You guys probably know this. Before and after shopping, whip out that potty. The top hat potty you can use even with a two-year-old um, if you aim correctly, if you've got a boy, but you really want to do it inside the car if possible. Um, whenever, and, and we'll talk about this in a second, where we have everybody try at a stop, we want to do that in the car with the baby if possible. And if there's another adult there, then they can watch the baby while you, the rest of you go into the public toilet. But um, it's just a little bit easier to manage doing this in the toilet. And then what do I do with the pee if they go pee in the potty in the car? Well, I always c keep a mini potty in the car. I've gone in the mini potty on the car in the car. Uh, maybe you have as well. Um, and, and that's interesting too. Sure, the car is pulled over. And if we're on the side of the road where there's grass, we're just going to dump that pee right into the grass. But what if it's poop? Hmm. If it's poop, you're going to want to put it in a bag and you're going to want to um, tie that bag up and then bring it to a, to a trash can or to somewhere where you can like think about if you had a dog and you picked up their poop with a bag, where would you throw that? Okay, you wouldn't just leave it on the side of the road, so we're not going to do that either, okay? Um, the other thing is if you do the Patet Plus and you do it over the grass, then you don't have anything to dump. There are so many ways to do this, but we want to go potty in the car, pulled over, obviously, in a very – I wouldn't pull over on the side of the highway. It's super dangerous. Take the next exit ramp and go and find yourself somewhere safe to do this. Um, that's tip number two. Tip number three is use a diaper backup as a tool during the trip. Will it hurt to say, go ahead and go in your diaper because we can't pull over right now? No, it won't hurt your progress at all. Your baby will understand. And I've had to do that with a nine-month-old baby who was already out of diapers. I put a diaper backup on him in the car and said, well, you're going to have to use that because we can't pull over right now. Some babies are going to insist. They won't take it. They won't have it. You're going to be out of luck. You're going to have to pull over. But the cool thing is you are supporting them as an individual and their dignity and their autonomy. So in a way, spending 10 hours to go five hours is worth it. And it's not going to be forever that you do this. Eventually, they're going to be able to hold it the entire trip. And you'll be like, wow, that was a tiny blip on the whole screen, the whole life of my baby in diapers. So yes, even with Isadora, who is out of diapers at 13 months, telling me every time at 15 months, we went on lots of road trips between 14 months and 20 months, and I always put her in a diaper backup during those road trips, and then one day I just decided not to. So um, full permission granted, that's number three. Number four, time your trip. You want to leave right after breakfast, if possible. Maybe after breakfast, breakfast we do a little playtime, then we do our first snack at 10 a.m., then we get in the car. Is your baby still doing a morning nap? Leave right after breakfast. Then you will have a lot of your trip be nap time. If your baby is down to one nap a day in the afternoons, then you're going to want to leave right after lunch. If you time your trip to be during nap time, you're going to have a lot less potty tunities than when your baby wakes up from nap. That's when you're going to offer. So that's number four. Number five, ooh, occupy them. Oh my gosh. You will have less 
can I pee, mama? I need to go pee. Ah, crying. Wah, wah, wah. If you occupy your child with either constant snacks <laughs> or tiny snacks that take a long time to eat or entertainment. Now, I personally don't show movies to my kids, but once a week, usually it's Little House on the Prairie, and I try to do things that are, are not going to influence them culturally. I think there's a lot of stuff out there right now that's really dangerous to watch, so I try not to. My exception is on a road trip. I got these Kindle fires for all of them. Yes, my youngest is three. If you've got a baby, obviously you're not going to want to stick them in front of a screen. But you know what? Try it out. And if it works and it helps you and it keeps them occupied and you only do it during that road trip to and from your house, wow, that is going to make a lot less questions, a lot less I need a potty tunity and a lot more smooth and, and stress-free drive. It's so important for you to be able to focus on the road when you're driving. And it can be a lot more pleasant trip if you just use screens as a tool, only as a tool. So I won't tell anybody if you want to do that. I definitely do it. Um, we're about to go to Georgia. Then we're going to go to South Carolina. Then we're going to go to Georgia again to go to the beach three times this summer. I have the Kindle fires in the closet. I will bring, bring them out for that. You can download the video straight to it and then have them watch what you've chosen for them. So they're not connected to the internet. They're not apps. They're not games and none of that stuff. But honestly, whatever works for you. We've also had the full-on um, seat back trays that have all the drawing stuff and the crayons and everything else. You can do that too. Whatever keeps them occupied. I definitely overfeed snacks during road trips because, again, I really want my kids to be like really chill during a trip because it stresses me out. I'm very sensitive to sounds. It stresses me out, makes it a dangerous trip if they're not occupied. And they just ask to go pee less. Okay, so that's number five. Number six, know your child's timing and assess the seriousness of signals. Your child will play with you and will say they need to go. They need to go. But really, they just want to get out of the car. And honestly, so do you probably want to get out of the car. But we need to stick with it. So how do we decide if they're not, if they're just playing with us? They're just toying with us. Oh, they can't possibly need to go again. We literally just stopped 15 minutes ago. So know if they did a full poop or not on your last exit of the car. Know what their usual natural timing is. Maybe they go every 45 minutes. Okay. It's only been five minutes okay, honey, we'll just wait a little while and here's a snack, you know, and just to delay that because you know that they don't need to go really until every 45 minutes. And again, child, a child will not hold it if it hurts. So they're going to release. Um, another, another wonderful thing to do, and I don't think I have this in here, is to protect your car seat so you don't have a massive cleanup to do. I always, I have these wonderful waterproof pads from Tiny Andes that I sell and I'm um, just fold that a couple times, twice, stick it in the bottom of their car seat and that's bonus tip number two. Um, all right. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Everybody tries to go potty at every stop. If you have a teenager and your grandpa and your two-month-old daughter and your husband, everybody tries at every road trip stop, okay? Now, I'm mostly talking about if you have multiple children and your eight-year-old will say, I don't need to go. And your baby is just like, just went and it's great. And you're just like, well, we're not going to stop again. With a four-year-old, a five-year-old, a six-year-old, a seven-year-old, they're not going to understand the concept of time, which drives me nuts. Like, how can you not understand yet well, how long a minute is? But they just can't. Um, let's say we're not going to stop again for the length of a full-length movie. So they know that that's a really long time. But we don't even have a conversation about it. We all go in. Everybody tries. I want to hear some pee from all of you um, if they're under 10 years old, if they're under 8 years old. If they're 8 and up, usually they're it's just entering that logical stage and they know whether or not they need to go. But even then, my 11-year-old sometimes will say he doesn't have to go and then he'll be like, oh, mom, I got to go right now. We want everybody to try at every stop. Number eight – Everybody will pee before we leave the house, including mommy. Oh, I have bonus tip number three. Bonus tip number three is whoever is driving or in the passenger seat, all the adults, please don't drink tea and coffee to keep yourself awake during the trip. If you're okay with drinking one of these, get a, um, a extra strength five-hour energy. It's for when you're tired, but you're not thirsty. So you're not going to be filling your bladder with all this caffeine and dehydrating yourself. Five-hour energy, I will drink half of the, half of one for two hours. And then two hours later, I'll drink, or two hours into the trip, I'll drink half a five-hour energy. And then I'll drink the other half two hours later if I still need it. it helps me not to have to be the one who is like, oh, I got to pee so bad and all my kids are napping. You've got three kids napping in the back and you're the one who has to pee you're in trouble. So that's bonus tip number three. Didn't realize it has so many bonuses, but hey, I told you I do this a lot of times. 
And my tip number nine to solve potty resistance during a road trip. So the basis of all eight so far is you be prepared and they will be less resistant. You be matter of fact and they will be less resistant. I hope that makes sense. Number nine is drop all expectations of catching a single thing. Your stress, because you expect to catch peas like you do at home, or you need to catch a poop or a pea in order to make this road trip a success and you're a perfectionist like I am, all that stress is going to cause resistance. Um, an auto flush going off will cause res- resistance. Not having the right potty seat will cause resistance. Um, not offering at the right time will cause resistance buying their, when they're toying with you about a signal and they're not really, they just want to get out of the car seat, they're going to be resistant to the potty because they actually don't need to go. Um, making this happen right after your baby wakes up from a nap, you're going to have potty resistance because they're going to be grumpy and they won't want to be in the car. So number nine is super important. Just drop all your expectations, drop the bar to the ground. I know it's embarrassing. I know you become ashamed or you feel guilty about not being a good enough mom or dad when things hit the fan. But nobody's watching except for yourself. So just take a deep breath. Don't expect to catch anything. Use that diaper backup because if you're not using a diaper backup or you don't have the potty, the, the car seat protected and they're super relaxed and they go in it, you are going to be stressed. You're going to have so much resistance just because of whoop, your mood being so negative during the road trip. And honestly, going on a road trip shouldn't be stressful. Going on vacation shouldn't be stressful. I know that oftentimes mine have been when I've been holding onto the wheel too hard and have too high of expectations on myself and my children. You know, I'm a single mom. I've got five children. I have really learned a lot what to let go of and what to make sure to get. Um, so Hopefully these nine tips to solving potty resistance during a road trip by being prepared and having a very matter-of-fact attitude and just having the plan and sticking with it and have, if you have a husband or a wife or a partner that you're traveling with, be on the same page about these things. Go through all of this, make some notes and go, okay, this is our plan to tackle how to potty during the road trip to, to reduce the possibility of resistance. I really hope that was helpful for you. And that's all I have to say about that. All right, I'm going to clap twice. My audio people will know that I am moving on to the next topic. Our next topic is super exciting. So um, I want to talk about, let's see. We got a couple Instagram comments of, yeah, it happened to my girl too. I know, man. I am not unique in all of this. This totally helps so much. Um, All right, and we have a little question there. So I'm just going to move on into the next topic because I think it's going to help some of you guys wrap your heads around what to expect, especially if you're moving from one age range to another. And we're going to have all these courses available as a bundle separately. But right now, if you buy my book, right after getting my book, you will be offered a gear bundle and then you will be offered a course bundle. And that has these three courses in it. So if you want to have absolute mastery and get your child out of diapers by walking and know what the next steps are, get my courses. They are different from my seven mini courses. They are the three primary programs by age range at Go Diaper Free. That's going to hit the store very, very soon. And I will send out an email and also let you guys know on social media when that's out. So this is a little excerpt from that. So today I'm going to talk about what things you can expect in the newborn phase, which is zero to four months old. I don't know about you, but when I had a brand new baby and I was doing EC for the very first time and I was doing baby raising for the very first time other than babysitting, which had happened decades before, I was a little bit lost and it would have been nice if somebody would have told me, hey, Andrea, this is what to expect at this stage. And then here's what to expect at the next stage and the next. So this is a series of three different episodes where we're going to be talking about things to expect regarding EC at newborn, mobile, and young toddler. So today we're going to talk about newborns. Now, developmentally, let's just talk about this. We're going to expect them to pee about every 10 to 15 minutes. Poop is going to vary. It could be every single time you feed. It could be um, seven times a day. It could be every seven days. Both of those are normal with exclusively breastfed babies. So poop is going to vary, but pee is a lot. It happens a lot. Luckily, they're not awake that often to be peeing a lot. (laughs) So the number of pees per day is not actually that high because they sleep a lot like a puppy. They sleep all the time. Um, And then around three months, we move into about 15 to 20 minute intervals. And I really don't, and and we're still about the same with the poops. I really don't expect you guys to catch all the pees with the newborn. And I'm going to tell you in the newborn program, Baby Meets Potty, I tell you very, very clearly 
that you can't catch all of them. If we get the wake-ups and we get the poops, we will have a really good foundation to EC. That's sort of the little trick there. So that's about what to expect developmentally. How often do they pee at this age? And the daytime, um, excuse me, the daytime backup at this age is probably going to be a diaper during observations. And it doesn't matter what kind of diaper you use, whatever works for you. During observation, you might get some aqua blue trainers if you don't want to do naked observation with your newborn. Those are going to show immediately when the baby's wet and you can still write that down or put it in the log. Um, The app that I have that's called the log, you can do observation time in there. So with newborns, that's what we wear. We're typically at four naps a day. Um, Typically, they're or not typically, but sometimes there's a sleep regression at three to four months. Also, I don't think it's a coincidence, at three to four months, we've got the developmental task of rolling. So your baby is going to try to roll out of your arms, and you might think you're getting resistance over the potty, but they're actually practicing rolling because that is ingrained in their programming to learn to roll at three to four months. We go down to three naps a day or so when baby's four or five months old. At this age, the potty that we use exclusively usually is the top hat potty. And I sell those at tinyandies.com if you need those. Fussy weeks per the Wonder Weeks, which is a wonderful uh, book and app resource, are five weeks old, eight weeks old, 12 weeks old, and 17 weeks old. If you notice fussy periods at those times, stick with EC, stick with the basics, stick with the four easy catches, and know that that fussy period will move on, will end. So that is, and I go over this roadmap in detail in the newborn program on Go Diaper Free. So you can definitely check that out and look at the whole, It's like it looks like a road, and you can see what development your baby's going to go through on all these levels. So that's a little bit. Now with EC, here's what, instead of talking about expectations for newborns, because there's just not a lot going on, we're going to talk about you. Your goal is to focus on the process, not any goals at this age. We are building potty confidence in you, the parent. We are finding a family rhythm. Maybe you're every time the baby wakes up, we're um, offering the potty, then nursing, then having some playtime. First fuss after nursing, you're going to offer the potty. Maybe that becomes your rhythm. We're establishing your habits as the parent. We already get the opportunity to develop a habit of changing diapers, but what a wonderful thing to add the habit of pegging onto that. Every time I change the diaper, I'm also going to offer the potty. The more you start this habit early on, and by the way, did you guys know that 50% of people start EC during this age range? And this has changed a lot since 11 years ago when I started doing this. It's amazing. It's wonderful. So a lot of you guys are in this boat. If you are, your goal right now is to keep your baby clean and dry. We don't want them sitting in pee or poop, do we? I wouldn't want to sit in that. Um, We're learning our babies better. So we're decoding all the cries. If you haven't, check out Dunstan Baby Language. The cry for uncomfortable is usually the cry for potty. You're decoding your baby. You're like, oh, all the things that it could possibly be. Oh, you stick them on the boob. You try to nur- you nur- you, uh, I don't know why you're crying. <laughs> About a third of the cries are because they need to go to the bathroom. So if we get that wake up and that poop rhythm going, we're going to have a lot better time decoding our overall baby's cries because that's communication, right? Um, We're going to synchronize with baby. So we're going to, when they start pooping, we're going to say, wait, open up that diaper, take them to the potty. Then they know that they can trust us and they can, their communication is going to result in responsive parent. So we start to sync up and the next time they go to poop, even at a couple weeks old, they will look at you, look to you, try to find you. And as they're tooting or whatever's happening or they're pushing down, they are making contact with you as a signal. We are syncing up. The other goal during this age is to build connection. EC is more about connection and communication than it is about completion or any kind of goal. And the last thing is we're going to create a foundation of language around pottying and eating and sleeping. We're constantly talking to our babies, you know, and we're not narrating everything. That shows that you are afraid and you do not know what you're doing and you're going to drive your baby nuts. If you haven't read the continuum concept, check it out because it talks about making your baby the center of attention and how that can actually backfire and make them feel really insecure because they're in charge when they just really want to learn how to be a grown-up human and and just observe you observe you and doing what you're doing. So baby wearing is super important during this age range. It also helps them to just relax and disperse all their energy. Like I know when I get a hug as an adult, I feel relaxed. My energy is just 
ah, babies are the same way. So if we wear our babies and we're talking about the things that we're doing just as needed, we hold them over the potty and we're going or <clears throat> when they need to go or when we see them going, we're building sound association. That's building a language. And when they start to sit during this time period, they're not going to be sitting alone. That's not developmentally appropriate. We don't want to put pressure on their spine. It's not appropriate. But if we're holding our baby over the potty or we're holding them over the sink or whatever, um, and if maybe daddy's nearby and wants to make the potty sign, you know, the T shaking side to side, that's developing a language. When you have your baby um, eventually in a, in a high chair, you're going to be building a language of, are you hungry? And even when we talk to them, oh, you're tired. Like we're naming things for them. You're going pee. This is the foundation of language that we get to develop. And we do it automatically. Baby makes a coo, we coo back. This is like a call and response. So in doing that with EC, we just naturally fold that into the, the grunting and the pee noise that we make when we see them go or when we say it's okay to go. So that was a lot, but I really hope that helps you wrap your mind around this. If you're pregnant, especially, this will give you some idea of what to expect during the newborn phase with EC. You can learn more in my Golden Window Newborns course. I know earlier I called it Baby Meets Potty. That's what it used to be called when it was a mini course. Now it's a full-grown program. It's called the Golden Window course. And we also have the Ultimate Course Pack, which will give you all 10 courses, my seven mini courses and the three developmental ones in the different age ranges. And I will give you guys a link in the show notes for that as well. Okay. And for those of you watching, that's for my sound people. For those of you watching live, I will be getting that link up by the time this course or this podcast episode goes up. And you will be able to find it at godiaperfree.com forward slash store. It is amazing. I interviewed 60 moms about what they want in a course. And they told me exactly what I should not leave out and what needs to be in there. So that's what these courses are all about. Okay, I'm going to take some water. And now we're going to do the next one. Okay, today we're going to talk about what to expect with EC with a 5 to 11-month-old baby. This is the, the era I call movers and shakers. Mobile babies are just starting to get into their bodies. They're absolutely into everything. Um, about, I'd say about 30 to 40% of people start during this age. There's There are a lot of ways to start during this age, especially with the easy catches. But I also, um, you know, in our last episode, we talked about newborns in the golden window. I call it the golden window because it's the easiest to start during that age range of zero to four months because your baby is not mobile yet. But hey, you find me when you find me. So if your baby is now mobile, I want you to know what to expect. Or maybe you're in the newborn phase and you want to know what comes next. What should I do next? Often when we're doing EC, we're like, should we be doing more? Is there something I'm missing here that I'm like, I should be ready for? But to be honest, you guys, usually it's just, you just you're overthinking and there's not really a lot to think about. So let me tell you though, some things that do change in months five to 11. Um, but first, we're going to talk about developmentally what to expect. Okay, so we usually go down, and this is from the roadmap in the course and the Movers and Shakers program, which is one of the three pillar programs over at Go Diaper Free. And we have three naps a day usually with a four to five month old baby. So we're still napping a lot, which means it's still a really great time to start. Um, we, we do go down to two naps a day between six to eight months. Maybe you didn't know that. Like when I was a first time mom, I was thinking, well, I don't know when anything really is going to happen. And I had Dr. Sears baby book on my nightstand and it basically told me what to expect. And it was this big encyclopedia of what to expect when, but they're going to drop to a morning and an afternoon nap around six to eight months. So we start at three naps though. We are going to be holding our babies over or supported on when they start to sit on their own, the mini potty. Or we can still use the top hat potty. So those are the those are the potties we use at this age. Usually the pee intervals are 20 to 30 minutes from ages 5 to 11 months. And poop will vary at 6 months um, is, what, is really, this is for 6-month-olds, 20 to 30 minutes is pretty average. Poop is going to vary because I don't know if you started solids or not. If you have, you usually get down to one a day. If you haven't, you could be anywhere from seven times a day to every seven days if you're exclusively breastfeeding. Now, at nine months, 
the pee spreads out a little bit to about 30 minutes. And these are averages, remember. And usually they're pooping daily if they're on solids. So about starting solid food, usually that happens around six months. It can happen as early as four months old. I highly recommend baby led weaning and the baby led wean team. Katie was on my podcast a while back. I'll link to that as well. Um, I, I just think that it's a really nice way to expose them to a variety of foods and to prevent picky eating and to give them the most developmentally appropriate experience of solid foods. But anyway, I digress. Around six months, we can expect that. We're not just exclusively breastfeeding or bottle feeding anymore. We're integrating food. Um, they start sitting usually around six months old. Did you know that? <laughs> and at six and a half months, coincidentally, we have a fussy week per the Wonder Weeks. Their app and book are really fantastic. Um, I think it's not a coincidence. I think whenever we're going through developmental changes, we're going to have changes in EC, changes in feeding, changes in attitude and fussiness. Six and a half months old is one of those weeks. At nine months old, we've got another fussy week and 11 months old. So if the, I know this is a lot to retain. You don't have to remember any of this, but if you join our Movers and Shakers program or any of our programs, you're going to get the full roadmap of what to expect with your baby and how EC um, blends in with all of that. So at seven months old or so, separation anxiety can begin. And that's when you leave the room, they cry. They realize you're a separate person from them and they start to feel a bit of insecurity about that. So one of the solutions for that I would always do is just baby wear. So my baby was with me during those periods of the yo-yo. Pick me up, put me down, pick me up, put me down. Don't leave the room. Ah, and you start to feel trapped. Usually around eight months, they start to crawl. I've had a baby start crawling at five and a half months. And I've had another baby who didn't start till eight or nine months. It can vary. Pulling to standing is around nine months. I've had a child who started walking at that age. So you, literally, you never know. And these are just averages. Creeping will start where they start to walk along the furniture while standing. They're practicing what it feels like to walk around 10 months. And this I got from the book that's over there, Montessori from the Start. There's a really nice um, progression of developmental milestones that your child will hit around when. Um, sleep progression usually, if it's going to happen, will be eight or nine months old. And you notice there's a lot of developmental stuff like crawling and pulling to standing. And some people, some children are walking. Sleep regressions are definitely a reflection of a developmental milestone too, if that happens. Um, daytime trainers or diaper is the backup we use during the day. So tiny trainers, some people completely go to that around seven or eight months. A lot of people are still in a diaper and that's fine. And during observation or diaper free time, you can be in trainers. Um, the ones I sell at Tiny Andy's do keep a pee off of your ground, a medium-sized pee, so they're really helpful. And you can see when they're wet if you don't want to do... If you don't want to do observation with a naked baby, which I don't blame you at this age, use the Aqua Blue trainers. I swear they will help you. Um, we have a couple of four of the most resistant periods in EC that I have surveyed my audience, thousands of parents about. Um, three of those happen during this age range. And one of them happens in the next session, um, section of 12 to 17 months, which we'll get to in the next episode. But the um, the second most common resistant period in EC is 11 to 12 months, right around when they're about to start walking. That is why. It doesn't mean you stink at EC. It just means there's something else going on. The third most resistant period in EC is actually eight to nine months old. So again, we got a lot going on developmentally and we have some language developing, which I'll get to that in a second. And I'm sorry, the first and the fourth are actually in the next period, young toddlers. So we've got two of the resistant period possibilities at this age. My point is, if it happens to you, just know that you're normal. Um, we do drop to those two naps a day between six to eight months, morning and afternoon, which I already mentioned. And we may or may not begin sign language. The baby might start to sign back between six to 10 months. Average is about eight months old. Boy, is there a lot going on developmentally at this time. So we definitely want to start with a fresh observation session, whether we're starting EC at the movers and shakers ages or we're just continuing from being a newborn to this. We want to do a new observation session just to refresh ourselves. Definitely use my app, The Log, and you can use that to, to track everything. But what can we expect in months 5 to 11 with EC? If you are already doing EC, especially this applies to you, we've got five things here, all right? Number one, signals often disappear and or change. Because think about it, once your baby becomes mobile, if we were living in a, in a connected sort of tribal situation where we are living, say we're living in mud huts and we don't have much clothing to deal with and we're like, you know, the Stone Age Indians that um, the continuum concept was all about, you 
your baby can now crawl outside and go right outside the door and then start to crawl outside and then start to walk outside and go with the other children at the potty place outside. This is what we have been wired to do for just so long. We are mammals after all. We do not soil our den. So at this age, when they become mobile in, in their wiring, they actually don't need you anymore. So their signals often disappear or they change or they become more subtle. Or, you know, as language comes in, they start to change into that. Number two, sometimes we get potty resistance during months 5 to 11 because of all the developmental stuff I just named. It should make a lot of sense that we're going to have some indication of these changes about to be happening or that are happening in this period of time, which looks like potty resistance. But what it really is is a message to you, mom or dad, that says, hey, just be patient. Stick with the basics. Stick with whatever the four easy catches are happening during this time. And you will get through this once that baby has finished that developmental milestone. Um, If you want more information, my potty pause resolution mini course will cover that if you're having a massive pause. But with potty resistance, there's a lot of things you can do, like change the environment, change the receptacle, um, lots of things, but mostly just patience. And during this time, babies start wanting privacy. So usually around eight months, they start to be aware of people being in the room with them and they don't want to do this while you're in there. Yes, that early. It's crazy. But this will solve a lot of resistance by giving privacy, turning our back, leaving the room, whatever. And I go into a lot more detail with all of this in the Movers and Shakers program. So definitely get that if this if this piques your interest. The third thing we expect in months five through 11 is that babies can begin to use sign language usually around eight months old. So we want to do the T shaking side to side for potty. Um, We can also pat on our chest. There are lots of ways to do this. Um, So using sign language is a cool thing that you just might want to know that's going to happen next. Great. And when it happens, take advantage of it. We're just teaching them words for things that most parents don't teach words for yet. Number four, lots of motor and brain development are happening and teething. So we just talked about all the motor development. We just talked about all the brain development. And on top of everything else, oh, they're also teething. So I liked to use Arnica homeopathics, the ones that dissolve in their mouth, to help address the teething pain if and when needed. Um, I'd even put topical stuff on the gums. You can use chewed up cloves if you want to. Just, you know, do your own research, figure your own thing out. But if you soothe the teething issue, you're going to have a lot better time with EC. Just a little hint there. And number five that will definitely happen in months five through 11 is mobility. Duh. And with mobility is not only, oh, it's just going to be so challenging to start EC. No, it is a great time to start EC because you get to teach your baby all these different parts, like how to sit on the potty and all these things that you wouldn't be able to do with a newborn. So it's super exciting. It's really great. You're probably going to need a variety of tools just to kind of roll with the ebbs and flows of EC and babyhood during this age. But having been through this five times myself and helped hundreds of thousands of other parents through it, I love the movers and shakers period, and maybe you agree with me. So I'm going to link in the show notes where to get my movers and shakers mobile baby program. That's for months 5 to 11 only. When I interviewed 60 people about this, they only wanted what they need right now. They didn't want to know what's in the newborn or the young toddler stuff. Like, just help me focus on what I need to know right now. This is a little bit of an introduction to that. In that program, you get we get much more into depth about exactly what you need to know along with what kind of mindset you need to make this period successful. Next up in our next episode will be months 12 to 17, what to expect. So if you're in the mobile baby period right now, or even if you're a newborn, we can fast forward and kind of look and see what we can expect during that period in our next episode. Till then, thank you so much. For those of you guys watching live, I'm going to be breaking this up to go into the um, – into the podcast. So I'm going to take some water real quick. My, my throat is so dry from the tea, which joy. Oh, I didn't do my double clap for my audio people. Sorry, audio people. Um, joy on YouTube says she's made the tea mistake. Yeah, we drink so much tea on a road trip. And then it's like, we're the ones who have to pee and wake up our babies, which is just kind of a, kind of a terrible moment. (laughs) All right. I love this series. I can't wait to see this on the podcast, you guys. It's going to help so many people. Hopefully, it'll help you too. All right. I'm just going through our little Instagram. Hi, guys. How's it going? Okay. And by the way, I'm filming new reels tomorrow. That'll be so much fun. I don't understand why my whole building is shaking. I must have children downstairs punching the punching bag. That's my guess. Hopefully, you can't hear that. Okay. 
Let's get into the next one. You guys ready? This is the fourth and final part of today's live where I'm teaching you all these things and you will see a replay of this live. We're just going to keep it on IGTV and Facebook afterwards and YouTube. It'll be there too. And you could also check it out on the podcast. It'll be episodes, let's see, 189, 190, 191, 192. And coming soon is I did an interview with Dr. Bob Sears yesterday on the podcast um, about the vaccine book and other things. Um, the Sears has helped me so much. So just a little, a little hint there that we're going to be able to have an amazing, amazing, um, experience listening to that podcast soon. It'll be episode 188, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Back to this. Are you guys ready? All right. So today we're going to talk about what happens during young toddlerhood with EC. I know that when I went into months 12 through 17 with my first toddler, he was already out of diapers at nine months old. But I had so many things to address regarding EC during months 12 through 17, and he wasn't actually totally independent until 17 months. I went into it blindly. Today I'm going to just debunk all the myths and kind of give you a mindset of what to expect during this time. And then you'll know what's going on and what you can expect and how you can roll with these changes with EC. All right. So in the last two episodes, we went over the golden window, zero to four month babies, and we went over movers and shakers, five to 11 month babies. So just definitely check those out if you haven't listened to them, if that's where you are. If you're just fast forwarding ahead or you're in the young toddler stage right now, I do have a full on program at Go Diaper Free on this called Passing the Baton. And I have the ultimate course pack, which is all 10 of my courses that is also going to be linked at um, on the show notes. So I'll link to all of those so you can get those full programs. They are only about this one in particular, Passing the Baton, is only about young toddlerhood because, boy, are there a lot of things going on. In fact, I have 12 things for you to expect during this period with EC. But first, we're going to go over some developmental averages here that come off of my roadmap that is included in all of my big programs that shows you this. this it's like literally a road that shows you when certain things happen. So you can look at it along with EC and resistant periods and things like that. So, um, And I just wish when I was a new mom for any of my five babies that I would have had a roadmap like that. It would have been a lifesaver. So let's dive right in. First, with developmental expectations during this age. So first of all, the number one most resistant stage reported by the people I surveyed. I surveyed about 1,000 people in my community. Um, about half, no, about 70% of people who had resistance had it at this stage of 12 to 13 months old. The second most resistant stage in EC was 11 to 12 months old. The other two were in mobile babyhood, so go back to that podcast if you want to see that one. But 12 to 13 months old, why is this the most resistant stage? Well, because they are a lot of babies are mastering walking at this time. And um, you think about it in an intact culture, a tribal sort of situation, they would be able to walk right out that hut and go potty by themselves. They don't need you anymore. They're going to resist because they want privacy. They want independence. But we have clothing and potties to deal with, so we definitely have to roll with that resistance. My biggest suggestion is to stick with the four easy catches, to stop using diapers when you have your baby start walking, when your baby starts walking. It sounds counterintuitive, but that's really what they're wanting by being resistant. Um, we get more into that in the uh, potty pause resolution mini course and also in the program itself. Um, the fourth stage of most resistance is actually 14 to 15 months. So we do have some in that age range, and I know that it's because they're still in diapers. You really want to stop using diapers when your child stops or starts walking and is really just, you know, they work on it, work on it, work on it, and then they're walking. So at that point, you want to stop using those diapers. Usually, and that's during the daytime, usually the sleep regressions, if they do happen, there's one at 12 months old, usually, if it's going to happen, it'll be around then. And again, it's no coincidence that it's during a developmental milestone because that messes with a lot of things. Other thing that happens developmentally is walking is around 12 months old. I get this information from Montessori from the start. It's a wonderful book with a beautiful graphic of the developmental stages with motor skills. Um, another thing I got from that book the hands work together at 12 months. You'll start to see that they work together. Um, the fussy weeks are just past 13 months and 15 months per the wonder – not the wonder years. Oh, I'm such a child of the 80s and 90s. The Wonder Weeks book and app will show you when fussy weeks typically are, 13 months and 15 months. Again, we've got developmental stuff going on. And with 15 months, we've got language developing as well. 
Daytime trainers. In the daytime, our backups are going to be trainers or undies at 12 months old. By 14 months old, I want you to be daytime in undies. And I don't want them to be trainers, especially if they pee in their trainers once a day or every time you put them on them. You're going to want to move to undies because your baby will synchronize with you and you guys will get on the same page faster and they rise to the occasion. It is unbelievable. If you don't feel ready, they are. So that's what we do with backups at that time during the awake times. Peeing intervals are at about 45 minutes, every 45 minutes at 15 months, Um, about 45 to 60 minutes, so almost an hour at 17 months. Some kids will hold it two or three hours by then. This is just kind of an average. Pooping daily at both age, at all this age range if they're on solids and if we're not having issues with constipation, which I do have a podcast episode on constipation and some solutions for that if you're experiencing that. But usually a daily poop is normal. Um, We do drop to one afternoon nap. Hooray. You can do more things in your day. Um, Between 13 to 17 months is usually when that happens. Also from the Montessori book, the hands start doing work. And the whole thing, the, the theme is help me do it myself between 15 to 16 months. And then I put in 15 to 17 months is about when kids really find an interest in practicing wiping like actually getting some success with it. You might have had them practice wiping before just by blotting themselves with it while on the potty. But now we're getting a little more serious about it. And clothing manipulation. They will end up with their clothing off or they'll have two shirts on or whatever during 15 to 17 months. That really happens a lot. So that's all I want to say about developmental expectations. Again, this is on the roadmap in a really beautiful visual form in the Passing the Baton program for young toddlers, which you can see the show notes for that. Um, Here are the 12 things to expect to change about EC in months 12 to 17. Number one, the signals, again, disappear and or change. Again, why would your child need you? Why would they need to tell you they need to go if they could just walk outside and go themselves? If you have the opportunity to do that, great. If your child's not signaling, it's just because uh, wiring and all of human history, why do they even need us anymore? They don't. But we have carpets and we have underwear and we have potties and stuff. So we definitely want to teach them how to sign back. I do have um, a free class um, called Signals Oh My that really goes in depth into signals and what exactly is going on there. Number two, we often get potty resistance as an indicator of I need independence and I need privacy. Number three, language expands. They start speaking with words or they're beginning to use sign language. And even if they don't, you can still stop using diapers at walking, even if your child's nonverbal or has developmental delays. Number four, what to expect in months 12 to 17? Walking, if it hasn't already happened. And number five, more teething. So we want to address the pain, if any, of the teething, comfort them in that way first, and then we will see EC improve. Number six, we have the beginning of smaller tantrums and asserting one's own will. My third son, Branson, or fourth, um, he started tantrums at 16 months and he frankly hasn't stopped and he's still, he's at five years old. So we definitely have that assertion of one's own will, which is really developmentally appropriate and great. But it also shows you, um, yeah, it's time to be wrapped up for sure. (laughs) Number seven, it's even more important to set up the environment and to enable, enable independence and to teach, teach, teach. So during this time, we call it passing the baton because there are so many things that we can teach them so that they have that need number um, two taken care of. They're not going to have to be resistant because they know all the parts of the process and they've been practicing. You've been teaching some things during non-potty times. So it's really important to set up the environment for success during this time. So you're going to be expected, I expect you, to set up that potty station in a way that has little things that they have all in their direct environment so that they can do the whole routine themselves. Because that is what Montessori teaches, and I strongly follow that, that you need to have this in place to enable independence, and you're going to have to step up to that as a parent during this period. Another thing to expect is number eight, I've mentioned this, is that naps reduce from two to one per day. So we're going to have a lot more awake time, but we're also going to have a lot bigger intervals between peas. Number nine, Long-term repetitive memory capabilities develop during months 12 through 18 per baby center, which basically means you can and should wrap it up during this period. So if you're starting EC during this period, which about 15% of you are, you're not late to the game. This is actually great. You get to start and finish in the same period and usually within the same month, which is awesome. 
Now, my book, if you don't have it, Go Diaper Free, comes with an optional download called The Hybrid Plan, which I definitely would recommend for this age range as well. Number 10, baby can begin to prefer the diaper as a convenience. So newsflash, your baby might become lazy (laughs) and use that diaper as a convenience. When you notice that's happening, it is time to stop using those diapers, period, or you're going to have a really hard time especially if they start to relax into it around 16, 17 months, you might end up having to do a potty training experience, which is fine. But if we can avoid that, we want to start stop using diapers before they start using them on purpose. Number 11, we typically have a daycare or a preschool to team up with. And I do have a mini course on that, Diaper Free at Daycare. Um, it's really, really good and thorough. And it comes with handouts to give your the teacher and how to how to navigate all of this. Um, But in the Passing the Baton program, we cover that a lot. I also have a weekly Zoom group, you guys, where you can interact with other ECers all over the world. It's called the Potty Tribe. Go diaperfree.com forward slash tribe. It's just 10 bucks a month and we have a weekly group there. So if you're having difficulty with daycare or preschool, it's often helpful to talk it through with a live person. So join us there if you have more issues with that. But also, You know, the book comes with all of this support as well. But if you need to talk to somebody, just like, hey, can you help me hash out a plan? Me and my coaches would love to do that with you. Back to number 12. So the things to expect in in this age range, especially if you're a mobile baby and you're like, okay, what's going to happen next? What should I do? You can expect by 17 months that most babies are signaling again or they're showing clearer signs. We aren't wiping ourselves just yet, but maybe we're trying to do so. And we're facilitating them doing it themselves. But really, two, three years old, it might take that long for kids to actually effectively wipe themselves. We're maybe coming up dry at night or during naps. Um, Twyla started coming up dry at 17 months. And we just stopped using diapers at night. All my other ones were around 26 months. And then all of the hundreds of thousands of parents I've helped, it totally varies. But if they start coming up dry at night, you can insert a dream pee and I'll link to the podcast on um, Dream Peas for you there. It's also in the book. But you can insert a Dream Pea just to help support them being dry at night and stop using diapers if this happens to you. And they're also trying to take off or put on their own clothing, which I also mentioned, which is great, a great opportunity. Maybe get some of those Learn Undies that I sell at tinyundies.com. They have the bear on the front of them. It's upside down. So those actually teach self-dressing and help reduce frustration in that. So overall in this period, it's an amazing time. Montessori called this the sensitive period for toilet learning. This is the developmental task for this age range. So if you are in this age range or you're expecting to be soon, hooray, let's celebrate that. Once they have this under their belt, they are opened up for so much more learning and this really unblocks them to be able to thrive in this world by having that in the bag. Um, that's all I have to say about that. And I, in my um, in the show notes, I'm going to link to that course. I'm also going to link to the Ultimate Course Pack, which is all 10 courses. So if you want all seven mini courses, which are the biggest trouble that people run into, and you want all three of the developmental ages, you do get lifetime access. You can use it for future babies. But it includes the Passing the Baton course and program as well, which is just what I asked people what they wanted to know during this age range, combined with everything I already know about it, and a lot of troubleshooting that is specific to the young toddler. Very different from a mobile baby or newborn baby. So that's all I have to say about that. I hope you enjoyed. All right, you guys, I'm going to take another drink. I'm clapping for my audio people. Ah, I think we might do another one. I'll do the next one next set. I just spilled water all over myself. Sorry. I'll do the next one, things to expect in months 18 through 36. For those of you who your toddler turned 17 months old and you haven't wrapped up yet, I will do that next time because my voice is starting to fail. And I really look forward to that. So that'll probably be number one, two, number um, podcast 193. So look for that as well. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I'm just going to check real quick and see if we had any little questions here. And we do have, I mean, really, I hope you guys join the tribe. It's been super fun and we've just been able to help each other in this wonderful setting every Friday. It's just 10 bucks a month. And as part of the tribe, you get um, 20% off Tiny Andes, all the things every month that you're part of that. You get into our private buyers club with that as well for just 10 bucks a month. Now, I do have one question from our Facebook um, live area. Jennifer, if you're still watching, 
Um, she's from Northern Indiana. I helped her potty train her two kids at three and a half months and six months old. Going to have her next baby in one month. Congratulations. Son kept, keeps wetting in his undies and doesn't mind. He puts his pants in the hamper and puts new ones on, washes his hands without me in the room even. He gets excited about independence wherever we go but struggles at home. Tried a potty watch but excitement wore off and he ignores it. Not sure how to get him to realize it feels yucky to have wet pants and to keep wearing the same pair instead of keep changing them. Any advice? Uh, on that one, Jennifer, it's he's working on something. I know it's hard, but just keep dry pants for him and and that will wear off, especially once you don't worry about it anymore. I would definitely say that he's going to – he is going through the motions of self-care and it's beautiful. So just keep a basket of dry ones. Keep a hamper for the wet ones. And um, if he's handling it all completely himself, great. Um, if it starts to impact other areas of your life, definitely get on the tribe and we can help you on a Friday um, in our live Zoom. He also gets up at night to pee by himself and change any wet pants, but will pee and then sit after he's wet his pants. <laughs> oh, no. He doesn't like my help and acts shameful at night and wakes everyone. Advice, please. Yeah, um, I think you need to have him naked from the waist down at night. That's my advice for you, and I hope that works. Um, it's worth trying anyway. Let's see if I have anything else. So that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. We will have a replay of this very, very shortly. Appreciate your eyeballs on this. Um, this has been four different lessons. The first one was nine tricks to solve potty resistance during a road trip. The other three were our newborn, mobile baby, and young toddler, what to expect during EC, and also just what to expect developmentally. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm Andrea Olson with Go Diaper Free. Please follow, like, share, do all the things with whatever, and I will see you next time. Thank you.